if um, let's say the daily is bearish but four hour four hour is clearly bullish okay now you can take buys on this four hour by confirming the buy on the h1 so minimum minimum we should have two time frames aligning for the setup you're looking at and with the two time frames one time frame should be should be a higher time frame always so the four hour is also a higher time frame okay so when it comes to the higher time frames you have monthly chart weekly chart daily chart and then the four hour anything below the four hour is a lower time frame chart so whenever you are framing a setup you need at least one higher time frame to support that idea and then another lower time frame for confirmation um, for your intermediate time frame confirmation and then an entry time frame which is going to be a very very lower time like the five minutes for m15 so the m5 m15 are my entry time frames but my intermediate time frame will be the h1 or the h4 depending on the time frame I'm looking at if i'm looking at the weekly charts I'm gonna wait for H4 to shift as my intermediate time frame. If I'm looking at a daily chart, I'm gonna use the H1 to shift as my intermediate time frame before I go to my entry time frame. So here we have daily overall is bearish, right? So daily is bearish, but what we have is that daily is bearish, but what we have is that a four hour has shifted bullish. So you ask yourself, what is price reaching for? On the daily chart since the four hour is bullish so probably um probably there is a fair value gap resting somewhere here on the daily chart so okay realize that price may possibly draw to that um now, now i want you to remember that fair value gaps are like magnets okay they are like magnets in price okay so when i was coming up in order to train my eyes I'll normally, um, I'll normally do this, place the magnets there to remind me that price will draw to that level. And also equal highs and then equal lows, they also act like magnets. Okay. So as, as I was coming up, I did this what I used to do just to train my, my brain that these areas are like magnets, they attract price towards themselves. So daily is bearish, fine. We know that daily is bearish. We had our break structure here. But now the four hour is bullish. We ask ourselves, what is price reaching for? We check our daily, realize that there is a fair value gap here. Okay. We place our magnet price, we draw towards it. So we are looking for price towards it. Now, price pulls back to a four hour order block or fair value gap. How do you take this entry? Okay, so in this case, our, the four hour here is the um, basis for our setup. So that's our higher time frame. For this particular buy, we are trying to take the four hour is our higher time frame. So we need an intermediate time frame to confirm from here. So in this case, we can use the H1 or M, M30 as our intermediate time frame, okay, to confirm the four hour level. So let's see. Our intermediate time frame, which is the H1, confirms our four hour level by shifting bullish. So, as price pulls back to your H1 level, you can take the buy straight away to target uh, the, the, the every day. If you want to further confirm after H1 has shifted here, that's also fine. Because confirmation, the, the more confirmation you have, the, the, the more confidence you have in the setup. So H1 shifted bullish, confirming the H4 level. As you mark this H1 new POY that then price taps into it, you can further confirm the entry on the M5 or M15 to take the buy. Very, very simple. So we can even use this as example, right? This, we know that the daily is bearish. Okay, but price has started breaking bullish on the four hour. We ask ourselves what is price reaching for? You can see that oh possibly price is reaching for this. Uh, let me use lines. 
and say our class is possibly reaching for that fair value gap. Either 50% of the fair value gap as a draw on liquidity. So let me use um, this. So you can create a fair value gap for targets as well. So let's say you are trying to target 50% of that fair value gap, okay? So H4 was um, was breaking bullish. So at which point did H4 broke bullish um, here? This high, yeah. H4 broke bullish here. So this would be the H4 swing low, to H4 swing high. Okay. So price can pull back to anything at all within this leg. Okay. It was a corrective push to the break. So we have so many swing lows. So price can use anything at all within that leg. So mark all the levels within. We have this rejection block. You can see that this leg we don't have any clear fair value gap. But like I said, works are also gaps. So there's a rejection block that you can mark. So as price taps into it, you want to see, so the wicks do the damage, the bodies tell the story. You see that the bodies closed. Beautiful. You want to confirm this H4 level. So you go down to the H1. So right now the H4 is our higher time frame that you are trying to trade towards this 50% of the FBG. H4 bullish, we tap H4 rejection block. You want to see an intermediate time frame confirming that H4 level. So our one hour will be the intermediate time frame. So going down to the one hour, we want to see a one hour shift in structure. And beautifully, the one hour confirmed the H4 level for us. So beautiful one hour confirmation right there. Now we have a new level on the one hour. In this case, we have this um, family gap. Uh, the favorite gap was not respected, but like I said, I'm gonna mark all the necessary levels you can find. Okay, that favorite gap, and then yeah, this um other block. Okay, so we had a beautiful tap into the other block, and that's what gave it the actual push. So let's go to the M15. We are gonna mark these two levels, and I'm going to confirm an entry on the M15. So the M15 is going to be our, um, our entry time frame. So our higher time frame on the 4 hour is bullish. We have a clear draw on liquidity on the daily. We tap into our 4 hour, our intermediate time frame on the 1 hour confirms for us bullish. Now we want an entry, so we need an entry time frame. So I'm going to read the M15 as price taps into our H1 levels. Let's go to the M15 to see what happened. So first of all, price tap into our fair value gap. We want to see bullish confirmation. We didn't get any confirmation. Do you see any bullish confirmation from here? You don't see. You don't see. So, and then the FVG got disrespected. You can see we close below it. So right away, you just delete the fair value gap. And then you mark. We wait for the next one hour level. So the one hour. On the block we mark, we wait for it. On the 15 minutes, we have some make some clean family gaps and other blocks. Yeah, so these other blocks and family gaps. So we can also mark these levels as refined levels. So this would be your new POIs you are waiting for. We tap into those POIs, you start looking for market structure to align bullish. And trust me, you can't avoid losses, but the fact that you lose. On the setup doesn't mean the setup is wrong. Here you would have had your first confirmation market structure shift. I'm trying to buy from this other block or this favor value gap. So here you would have taken a loss, and a lot of people once they take the loss, they close their laptop and they are done. So this will this would have been a beautiful stop loss being hit. If you are like me, who like to place it very, very tight below the low, you would have lost the trade. But if you are conservative and you like to give it slight space below the swing low, then you would have been in the trade. Okay. So it depends on what type of risk appetite you have. For me, definitely I would have been stopped out because when I place a stop loss very, very tight below the swing low. So let's say we got stopped out. 
Don't give up. Don't give up the setup. Okay. Because we are still bullish on each four. Yeah. Um, since since I started trading, um, since I started learning ICT, about it's been about three years or so. And this yeah. oh, ICT. Oh, this ICT. So okay. th that's how I trade on forest. Forest actually. Yeah. Just that yeah. um I use the Q zones and then all of that in combination. But on forest, I'm, I'm only looking at daily liquidity pools and daily favor gaps, internal range to external range, external to internal, very, very simple. Um so we would have lost here, you don't give up. We still wait for new confirmations, and here we had that beautiful, aggressive run to the upside. Very, very aggressive. And we have a breakup block here paired with a fair value gap. And I see a breakup paired with a fair value gap. That's a unicorn setup. I'll always enter from there. Either the breaker or the fair value gap. That would have been a beautiful entry. And then we would have had all of these profits. All the way to fifty percent of the daily favor legal. But as we tap the low of the favor legal, we can take a partial. And then you bring stop loss to break even. And then you leave the rest to fifty percent of the favor legal. And look at how perfectly price reacted from fifty percent of the daily favor legal and you roll down before continuing. Up. So this would have been a, um, a beautiful entry that I would have taken. A unicorn entry. Stop loss below this um, other block. But ideally, um, when it comes to stop loss placement, also it will come with um, experience. I don't always place my stop loss at swing lows like this. No, not always. If I'm really, really confident in that confirmation, like this is a beautiful confirmation, um, this is a beautiful displacement, aggressive run on how many highs? This high, this high, this high. Very, very, very aggressive. Clean, fair value gap. Like I said, um, stop loss placement will come with, um, um, with, with experience because I will, I will never take this entry with stop loss here and look at the risk reward. The risk reward will be screwed. Okay, this one is not bad. This times 2R. So 2R minimum uh, for the low hanging fruits, which is the low of the FVG is giving us 2R. And then 50% of the FVG. It's giving us um 3.3 R. Okay, so it's not bad. But for me, I would, I would have still maximized even my first TP by reducing reducing the stop loss to the fair value gap candle low. So this the candle that formed the fair value gap low. So this candle. Now where that, that would be where my stop loss would be. Um, and that's what ICT teaches. We have a stop run, market structure shift. We are taking entry from fair value gap with three stop loss at the fair value gap candle low. So that, that, that would have been my stop loss, actual stop loss placement. I don't always do this. If the confirmation is not so good for me, I wouldn't do this. Like here, we should the structure, but look at how we should the structure with my wick. So in this case, you can expect a deeper pullback. But if you break confidently above the highs, uh, this one, I'm be confident with this stop loss. To maximize my profit potential. So minimum target would have been 2.5 R. And then if you put it all the way to 50% or even 25% of the family gap, this will give you 3.3 and then 50% will give you 4 R. So risking $10 for like $40. Or whatever the um, amount you are putting on, you are getting times four. So this would have been a beautiful so, so you should always ask yourself are you taking a counter trend trade or are you taking a pro trend setup <laughs> so always ask yourself is this is this trend a pro trend setup or a counter trend setup whichever way you are doing it make sure you have at least one higher time frame supporting your setup and then an intermediate time frame supporting the higher time frame level and then an, an entry time frame supporting the intermediate time frame level 
I don't always use the three time frame. Sometimes I just use my intermediate time frame for the entry. Sometimes I'm just sometimes I'm very confident with the setup. I don't have to wait for an entry time frame confirmation. So for me, in this one I would have taken aggressive buy from my H1. Um, from my H1 right here. Especially, um, I, I normally do aggressive entries if price pulls back all the way to the last order block. Normally, when I have that kind of scenario, I don't wait for confirmation because it's the last POI within the leg. Okay. If you are taking this favorable guy, you can be like, okay, we have this favorable guy, but we also have this order block. Price can buy from here, but price can also come here. So you don't know where to enter from. So this one, you may want to confirm here. Yeah. But if price comes all the way to the last one, you don't have any more people to wise below. So you can just take aggressive buys. You don't need confirmations all the time. And then you just write it. Okay. So this will have been an entry from um, your intermediate time frame without waiting for an entry time frame confirmation. So four hour, one hour, and then you take it from the one hour. But you are going to be most accurate when you wait for three time frames to align higher time frame intermediate time frame and then entry time frame but like i said i don't i don't even always have the time to wait for entry time frame sometimes the intermediate time frame is enough for me so i, I normally do one hour entries uh, normally maybe i'm playing it from a four hour level or the, the one hour gives me entry confirmation and i'm taking it without waiting for m15 again so i don't have time so it all depends on the time I have. And if I want to be sitting beside my screen watching the chat. So it all depends. And it also depends on the capital you are trading. Very, very, very when when I so two hundred dollars. Yeah, you can take one hour entries for around um, two hundred dollars. You can you can take one hour entries. Just that uh, you, you should you should you should um understand the, and be familiar with the lot sizes for each of these synthetics for for 51 is <laughs> for this 51 is a stop loss like this with the minimum loss size of 0 0.005 maybe a like maybe like 15 dollars i miss you maybe like 15 dollars but this same stop loss range on the 75 index maybe like eight dollars or seven dollars so that's why you should be familiar with some of some of these synthetics have higher paper value than others. For example, step in this, step in this, a very tiny stop loss with a minimum loss, loss size of 0 0.1, and you, you check the, the risk on it, and it's like $15. It's crazy. So it depends on the assets as well. If it's an asset with a higher paper value, and I realize that this one hour entry is giving me a lot of risk even with the even with the minimum loss size then i will make sure i reconfirm on m15 on or or, or or on m5 to reduce that stop loss okay so all these factors come into play depends on the money attached. sometimes i even take daily time frame entries um the last time i was selling from the daily order block on uh, this 100 one is gave us one is to 1.5 is to one, but later came full break even. Uh, so sometimes some of you are selling from or buying from daily level, the stop loss is beside, but sometimes you by calculate and the stop loss is not that much, so it, it may be worth it just entering straight away. And if the capital can hold that stop loss, why not? Yeah, so um. 200 yeah, you can take one hour entries, like I said. Um, but uh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That, that's very, 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 very important. I promise you. Um, the money management is extremely important. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if you have come again. Yes, I am a so most of the costs are then I will follow them the trace 